Today I'm sharing a pattern that is a twist on the simple dolman style. It's not a simple dolman style at all. There's so much more and the fit is amazing. Woven sewing coming your way. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing and we are hopping into some really fun woven sewing today. The pattern I have to share with you is a Le Monde top from It to Stitch. It's a brand new pattern. I've been testing it for a little while and I was super excited to share because the style is just totally, totally different from anything you've ever seen. Starting from the style to how the pattern pieces are and the shapes of them, they're just very different, very unusual, just intriguing and it's an amazing result. It's for woven fabric. You can see the line out here that there is a dolman type of shape on the sleeve. That means that there's a curve right there, you don't have a separate sleeve piece. Although you do have separate pattern pieces from the shoulders out this way. Now this seam right there doesn't lie exactly on your shoulder, it's a little inward. I think that's great because the gathers come from inside your shoulder which makes your shoulders look a little narrower considering there's a little bit of gathers right here. So it's really really clever. From that seam there that starts on your shoulder you have a princess seam going down. You know princess seams can start from the armhole, they can start from the shoulder. These start from the shoulder, I think that's awesome. And you have something similar in the front and the back. At the hem of your dolman sleeve it's slightly gathered into bias tape. And with bias binding is the way that you finish a scoop neckline also. Not many pattern pieces, just three main pattern pieces and then a little bit of binding, that is it. You are not going to spend that much time cutting up your fabric and that's great. The length of the top is meant to hit the high hip, way below your waist, in the middle between your waist and your full hip, around that section right there. Of course you can add a little bit of length there or shorten it according to your preference or your height. This is not a top you can lengthen all the way down to your full hip unless you want to make major pattern adjustments. You can make it a little bit longer for sure. Super relaxed fit, no closures. You can just put it on over your head and be out the door in a second. It's a perfect top for hotter weather. Or in my case, I'm into autumn, but it's not cold at all yet. It's not cold, so this is perfect. When I discuss fabric choices, I always put a graphic here for you to see the choices. And for woven styles, I tend to just separate them into the fabrics that will drape really nicely, that are fluid, soft, and then there's another list that has the more structured fabrics. The more structured fabrics don't necessarily have to be heavy fabrics at all. You can find really, really lightweight fabrics, some cotton voile, cotton lawn, you can find them in the lightest weights but when you hold them up they just sort of stand on their own a little bit, they just don't drape beautifully like rayon does, like silk does. So have a look and see what you want. <laughs> I've always said that when a style has gathers or any type of feature that could create a little bit of volume, I like to keep my fabrics close to me. That means I need fabrics to drape. But that is just my personal style, that is just the way I like to sew and I keep the structured fabrics for styles that don't have those types of features. So I've chosen 100% rayon, it was a really easy choice for me to make, all about rayon, about sewing with rayon. If you haven't watched it, you've missed out because it's really, really comprehensive. When I was preparing that video, I pressed some of my fabrics so I could show you them, the flow, the types of rayon, and I had a certain stripy rayon just there, right in front of me. It's not that I would have chosen to do it if I hadn't made that video because I have so many rayons in my collection, but that one was fresh in my mind. And I thought just because of the way the patterns are made and the pattern pieces are shaped, the stripes were really going to show that off and that means I can still make a print and I don't have to make a solid. If you choose a fabric that has a stripe on it, a vertical stripe or a horizontal, whichever, it's really going to show the design lines on the garment because of the way the shapes are made here on the pattern pieces. So that is one choice and the other one was a really, really sort of precious fabric because of the color, the type of fabric, so, so light. It's those types of polyesters that imitate silk amazingly. It's those types of fabrics that are pricier than others. It's not 100% silk, but oh my gosh, it feels like it. And it is, you know, th that type of fabric that you have to work extra hard for. That is the one I've chosen in a beautiful, beautiful print. If you saw my previous video all about binding armholes and necklines, then you would have seen a sneak peek of my fabric. The Lamont top is on its release week and that means that it's 20% off through Wednesday the 18th of May next week. 
Each Stitch always does that in panel releases. If you are familiar with the brand, you would know. Also, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you would probably get a link there to a blog post that shows you all of the photos from the testers that participated. It's always good to see different points of views and how other people that sew interpret a pattern and pair it to fabric because I'm usually pretty stuck to the flowy fabrics like rayon and silky stuff but there are other people that do choose cottons and linens and other things and it might be a look that you might want to see also I will leave you in the description box my affiliate link as always if you do purchase a pattern through there I do receive part of that sale back as commission but it doesn't cost you anything extra that is one way that you can support the work that I do here and I also leave you helpful links that go deeper into certain techniques like the neckline bias binding and things like that to help you put your garments together. So if you like the style and you think it's something you want to sew, it's always better to get it on sale, right? Sizing is available from 00 to 40 US. That goes up to a hip of 62 inches. Because this is an easy to fit and easy to wear, more relaxed style, you don't have separate cup sizes like you do for most woven patterns from each to stitch. In this case, you have a regular bust option. You would use this one if the difference between your high bust and your full bust is zero to three inches and then you would use the full bust option if the difference is three inches or more you know the three is always there in the middle if you do have a three inch difference you can sort of make the choice and I always tend to go for the full bust option especially for a woven I know I really want that extra length there a little bit more ease at the bust it just I'm just more comfortable that way so I chose the full bust option because I'm right on the three there could have done either or. As I mentioned, this top hits a high hip. You do have a finished length from the nape of your neck right there down to the hem. Seeing that measurement, I know that is extremely short for me. It's just too short for me. I'm taller. I usually need to add length anyway. So at least for me, I knew I wanted to add one and a half inches to the length so that it actually hits my high hip and not higher than my high hip. <laughs> and when you look at finished garment measurements, there is no defined bust measurement here because all the front is integrated into the sleeve, so you're gonna have fabric around here also. Choose your size based on what you want up here, whether it's a regular bust or the full bust option. Choose that first. And for this specific style, you need to choose that size and just use that size. You can't print several sizes at a time and use the layers function and blend on the side seams as you usually do because of the shape of these pattern pieces. I think I'm gonna skip all the fitting adjustments until after you've seen the sewing so that it makes sense. Because if I just go here and show you the pattern pieces and tell you what to change, you might not understand what this is because they are not the same as you would expect. They, they are shaped quite differently. Let's see the fitting adjustments and those things after we see the sewing for this time. Let's do it that way. I think it will be much more clear to you because the design is so different. These are the two binding pieces for the sleeves because they need to stay at a sort of exact length. We don't want these to stretch out and they are cut on the bias. I am going to do a guide stitch at 3 8 with a short stitch length and it'll help me press one of the sides in but also keep it the same length. I'm trying not to let this hang and stretch, I'm trying to hold it in my hand and guide it through. So this is going to help me press this in but also keep it a bit more stable and prevent it from stretching out. I'll just do the same thing on this one. Here's the back neckline. I have a pin marking the center and I'm just going to stay stitch from the shoulder to the center then flip to the other side and do the same. I'm using the regular stitch length and for the neckline the seam allowance is going to be 3 8 on this pattern so I'm just doing it smaller than that. And I'll just repeat exactly the same for the front neckline and that way I can relax that my neckline is not going to stretch out. There are only three main pattern pieces for the Lamont top. So you have these here that will go in the center. You can see the neckline is lower so that is the front. The neckline is higher there so that is the back. And this long huge piece is what's going to go in between them. This small curve that you see there is actually going to be the sleeve. So it's a very unusual piece. This on the top is going to be the top of 
the sleeve right there. This is going to be the hem of the sleeve and all this that continues down will be sort of like a princess seam front and back. Very interesting. This one has the grain line going this way. So on this section here that's going to be the side seam right there. That's going to be cut on the bias right there. The side seam is on the bias but not the sleeve area. I have already stay stitched my neckline pieces because I thought that was really really important before I start manipulating them and putting them on the table for you to see. So that's done. And I have these little binding pieces, two for the bottom of the sleeve and one for the neckline. For these I have done a guide stitch at 3 8 on one of the raw ends and I have already pressed it in. My fabric does not press very well but I do have a crease of some type right there. So these are ready for later. Now we're going to take these two pieces and put them together and sew them at the shoulder seams see the little shoulder seams there once those are sewn together then you're going to know how this makes sense so here i have the front piece and i'm just going to put the back piece right on top and align those little shoulder seams they're quite narrow they are going to sit narrower on your shoulder joint because the sleeve has gathers there and that's going to give you the ease of movement so these are supposed to be narrower than your body it's part of the design that's why they look so short right there this pattern uses half an inch seam allowance for all the main seams except for when you're sewing the binding on the neckline and and the bottoms of the sleeves but these shoulder seams they are regular seams so it's just half an inch when I serge these seams I'm going to be trimming them down to about 3 8 just to avoid the bulk you don't really need all that fabric in there once you've sewn the seam before sewing the main pieces together I'm going to finish the neckline because it's going to be easier to manipulate now that I only have two small pattern pieces together so I have my neckline binding here the short ends together and I'm going to sew them with 3 8 seam allowance your fabric probably won't curl like mine I have the guide stitch there and one of the raw ends already pressed in to help later. Here is my neckline. You can see the stay stitching that was done earlier. This is a pin marking my center back and they have one marking my center front. The binding is calculated exactly to fit this one to one and I'm going to sew it on the reverse. That means I've got the right side of my binding, the nice colors there touching the wrong side of the neckline here and this little seam that united this I'm going to just pin it right here where the center back is and then pin the other one at the center front and then just pin all the way around. Remember we have a folded edge that's not the one we want in we want in the nice flat edge it's the one that we're pinning right now. If you want to sew it traditionally then you would sew it right sides together and then flip it to the back and top stitch but I want to sew it on the reverse so then I can wrap this around the seam allowance bring it forward here cover the seam and then be able to top stitch from the right side. Okay here is my binding I would usually just sew this onto the neck with pins but this fabric is sliding everywhere it's curling it's just not the easiest to work with for this one I have just hand basted it on instead of using pins that way I'm going to be sure the raw edges are going to be together and I won't be having fabric trying to slide away from me there it's just sewing this on around make sure you're as accurate as you can with the seam allowance because the binding is going to wrap over the seam allowance so it does need to be nice and even all the way around What's different about this type of binding is that because it's going to be exposed, it's going to wrap around the seam allowance like that. So on this curved area of the neckline, you don't need to snip anything because this won't be folding to the inside. It's different when your binding is going to be completely hidden to the inside and then you have that tension on the curves right there on the edge of the seam. In that case, you would need to snip along the curve. But because this is just going to be straight up like this and the binding will come forward and wrap around it, you can just leave it like it is. Flipped my neckline so that I have a nice pretty side of the fabric. You can see the bindings coming from the wrong side. This is going to be extended like this. This. this is going to wrap over and then we had that edge that was previously folded that folded edge is going to cover that seam right there all the way around this is another step I'm going to take my time to pin and hand base to have the most accurate result and then I'll go ahead and edge stitch right there I have the binding wrapped over towards the front that folded edge is covering the seam and it's been hand basted so now I'm just going to carefully top stitch this right on the edge I'm going to start somewhere around the back and just go all the way around no rush here because I really want it to look pretty Ready?
Here you can see my binding finished from the right side of the blouse. It was a hard time for me to pick what color to use. I ended up picking a lighter tone because a lot of the blouse has that type of color. So that's what I use. Nice and neat. I'm happier to do it from the right side because that's what I know is going to be seen. And then I don't need to worry about what's being caught under there because it's already been sewn. So that is why I prefer the reverse way to bind necklines like this. Now that I've sewn the shoulder seams, as you can see, I've laid these on the floor so you can see them. They are quite large and I really wanted to show you how this comes together. You can see that we have the large pieces on the bottom and the top and then in the middle we have the front and back pieces where the neckline is. You can see the round area in the middle. The shoulder seam will match a notch right in the center of this large curve piece and that will be the top part of the sleeve. And then on the main front and back pieces you have a dot mark a few inches above and below that shoulder seam and then on the large curve piece you have these dot marks also you can see it's a larger area of course because that is going to be gathered into the main front and back pieces you can see there that is what is going to give you those slight gathers right there on your shoulder so what we'll do first is take one of these match up the dots so we can gather this excess right there into that small area right here once the gathers are sorted out then we can pin all the rest down okay here we have the top part of this large piece there is a notch that will match the shoulder seam and here we see a dot and here we see a dot. This is what's going to be gathered in. From dot to dot we're going to do two rows of gathering stitches. It will just be a really long stitch length there. When I gather I like to do the first row at about a quarter of an inch and my seam allowance is going to be half an inch to sew this piece together to the other one. So I want my second row to be a bit larger than that so that when I stitch I can have the gathers be right there in the middle. So I'm going to do the second one at five eighths of an inch. Okay now we're going to put these pieces together after we've done the gathering stitches there on the large piece. So here we see the shoulder seam, here is a dot and here is a dot. They're just a few inches away. This is the front, this is the back. I can tell because this neckline is lower here so it's really easy. And further down this way you're going to see a single notch. I've got it marked right there. So find the large piece that matches this when you put them right sides together. So on this side, this large piece, you can see the single notch that is going to match that one down there. Right in the center of this large piece we have a mark that's going to match the shoulder seams. So I'm going to match those up first right there. Then further down we have a dot that's going to match this other dot over here. This is where the basting stitches started remember. And then on this other side we have the same little dot and it's going to match that dot there. Mark them all with a friction pen by the way. You can really see them but they're going to disappear later. So you can see the excess here that is going to be gathered right there at the top of the shoulder area. So I'm just going to pull the threads and gather towards the center and then from the other side towards the center. I think I always get a nicer result like that than trying to do it in one go. So just pull and gather until the length matches. Pull and adjust until your gathers look nice and uniform all the way along. I want to do this in several steps. I don't want to do one continuous seam and I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so that's nice and neat. What I want to do now is sew with a definite stitch now at a half an inch seam allowance from dot to dot and fix those gathers in place. I did the second row of gathering stitches lower so it's going to be beyond the seam that we've done so we can just easily tug and remove this now and it will be gone in one second. The other one can go also, it doesn't need to be there anymore and this is how that's going to look. Once we press it this is not going to be as poofy as it is right now but that's how it is. Now why did I not want to sew this continuously because I could have kept pinning this all the way down to the hem basically. It is, it can be done continuously. So if you kept pinning, you can get all the way down to the hem on this side and it's the same on the other side. The only thing is for me, this big piece, once you get to the side seam here on this area, this is completely biased. It could stretch if I leave this on the top. So I basically want to have the side that's on the bias at the bottom where the feed dogs are. And I want the other side that's on the straight of grain to be against my presser foot. So I basically want to sew all this other area the other way. So all I'm going to do is flip it to have the gathers on the bottom. I had to sew this area with the gathers on the top so I could control them. But for the rest, I want to sew it with the main piece, the main front and the main back on top. 
and then this larger piece that's on the bias on the bottom that way I can prevent that bias area from stretching out with the presser foot itself so I'm just going to be careful and pin it now on both sides and sew them in two separate goals here I have the single notch that I've matched and here I've matched the hem with a pin and now I've laid it there really really carefully I have the bias piece on the bottom right here so it doesn't stretch out I want it to be the exact same length as, as this piece that's on the straight of grain so while it's all flat and everything matches I'm just going to pin it there while keeping it flat so this is my reasoning for doing it in several sections instead of doing it in just one continuous seam here is the other side right here where I have this pin is where we have the double notches that means that this is the back so I've also got it pinned this big side underneath that's all on the bias right here but the feed dogs are going to sort that out when we sew it in this way at this point the lengths are matching and I'm going to start sewing here at the hem I'm going to sew right up to the dot remember I have already sewn this area so that's just where I'm going to stop and then I'm going to keep that section start over on this dot and finish all the way down the other side This is where I'm going to start now from that dot all the way down to the bottom on this side now. Okay, so we have a continuous seam. It's just that I didn't sew it continuously. But if we flip this, we're going to have our gathers there on the top and this type of princess seam that comes from the shoulder and goes all the way down to the hem. You can see this on the bias just because of the print also. The print has a bit of stripes going on there discreetly and you can see the fabric moving in 45 degrees compared to the stripes going vertically. So I really wanted to keep this bias area stable and that's why I wanted it at the bottom touching the feet dogs. Hope it makes sense. <laughs> I'm just going to repeat the same thing on this other side. On this other side I don't have it there yet so it'll just be the same process. Gather into there first, sew that and then sew these in two separate sections. Okay, so here we have our top all extended. These long pieces here have been sewn on, on both sides. I've pressed the seam allowance towards this side, towards the sleeve hem right there. That is going to be actually the hem. This is going to be the sleeve. So all we need to do now is take one of these, put them right sides together. And now this is looking like a dolmen type of top. <laughs> here we have the sleeve. This is the curve that we're going to match and sew on both sides. This piece is actually on the bias. We just need to be careful with manipulation to not stretch it out while we're sewing so here is one of my pieces this is all bias right here I really want to protect this from getting stretched out before I sew so I'm just gonna place this here I'm gonna keep that up there on my hand I basically don't want to let this hang see that I'm guiding this through I'm not pushing it from the back Okay, so I'm happy with the seam. I took all the precautions to prevent this from getting longer and stretching out because you definitely want this to be level with all the rest of the garment even though this ended up being on the bias. I have the blouse right sides out as you can see there. This is the side seam with a curve that we've just done and I've got a pin there so that I remember what direction the seam allowance is supposed to go to. And all along the bottom I've done two rows of gathering stitches just like you can see on the top of the sleeves there. I've marked with a pin there the center also. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the neckline. I'm going to do it on the reverse and I've got my binding here. I've sewn it together right there, the same as I did with the neckline. I've marked the center with a pin. I'm going to have the right side of the binding touching the wrong side of the sleeve here. It's to do it in the reverse way. I've got the edge that wasn't pressed. This is the edge that's pressed. That's not the one that we sew on. And this little seam, I'm going to match it to the seam right here under the arm. And this middle point, I'm going to match it over here to where this other pin is. Don't mind my binding, it's extremely annoying because it just wants to curl. Okay, now that I have those two references pinned, 
You can see that the binding is smaller than the sleeve and that's because we're going to gather that into there. Okay, so you can see the gathers there. I have the binding inside. I'm going to take my time to hand baste it all, including the slight gathering. And then I'm going to sew it at 3 8 Same way that I did with the neckline, I'm going to bring this forward to cover the seam like that and top stitch. Okay, I've hand basted this. I've got the binding inside as you can see. Remember right side of binding to wrong side of the sleeve if you want to do it on reverse. I'm sewing 3 eighths of an inch here just like we did with the neckline. The only difference here is that we have gathers. Okay, I've got all the ugly stitches out of the way. And then the same thing how I did with the neckline. I'm just going to bring the seam allowance up. I have the fold already that we'd done earlier and then just bring that over to cover the seam. And the gathers will be in there and then we top stitch. So again, I'm just going to take my time to hand baste it all before top stitching. Now if I put an image here on the screen of how these pieces look, how that large piece looks and how it comes together with the smaller pieces in the center, front and back, you will understand now exactly how to do the length adjustments and if you need extra space for the hips. So let's first see how to do length adjustments if you want your top shorter or longer. There are shorter and lengthened lines there. We are going to see with mini pieces how to do that because showing you on the huge pattern piece was just gonna be really difficult for me to film and also difficult for you to see what I was doing. So I just made mini ones and you'll be able to see for sure how to do length adjustments. And I'm also going to show you how to add width to the hips. Easy peasy, let's see. Look, I've just printed one paper so you can see on the area that we're gonna be working on to shorten, lengthen, and blend sizes. So this is part of the side seam right there. This is part of the curve for the dolman sleeve. And this is the bottom right here. This is the side seam. And you can see this line that's a shorten and lengthened line. But you also have this line that goes perpendicular to it. And that's where you're going to be gliding your piece so that it makes sense. This is too big and too hard to manipulate. And you're not seeing the full pattern piece. So it's not going to make sense. So I've made mini ones. <laughs> the same pattern piece is just tiny. So basically here we have a front. And that's going to go along this end right there. So that's how one front is going to be. And then you're going to have the back right here on this other side. The back is very similar. It's just got a higher neckline and a slightly different shape. These are not symmetrical. If I tried to fold these in half, they are not the same piece. So definitely the front is different than the back. Right here we can see the short and length line and then we see the red line that goes perpendicular to it. I would rather make the length adjustment first and then do my hip adjustment. So I'm just going to cut here. I'm going to add one and a half inches to mine. So this is where this red line is going to come in handy. That red line is going to help you keep this balanced. You could lengthen it and end up shifting it to the wrong side. And you confirm that you are lengthening or shortening following that red line right there. On your pattern, it's not going to be red. I've just drawn a red right there. Okay, so here you can see the gap of pink. That is where I've added my length. Now, now here, I will just need to smooth this out. Starting from here, maybe higher, but just make sure the curve makes sense right there. I'm going to be showing you what to do on one side because what you do here, you are going to do the same over there. Now, this is my front or back piece. They are pretty much, they are very similar. Whatever I added to this, I'm going to add to this one. The front is a regular piece. It's just cut on the fold. So you're going to have a nice grain line so you can guide yourself for your length adjustment. Here we have a front piece has also been lengthened in the same amount. When these get sewn together right there, these are gonna match as you can see right there. You are going to have some notches along the way that are gonna help you match these together. But remember there's excess here on the top of this large piece because all this area is going to be gathered. Make sure you make the adjustment on both. Now to adjust for the hip, you're only going to do it on this piece, not on this piece, it's just right here. This is the dolman sleeve, that's the curve under the arm, and this is the side seam there. Maybe a little further than where you see that red line, I'm going to draw another one and I'm going to make a rectangle. I draw another line sort of parallel to this one where we adjusted, and I'm going to draw the rectangle here. I'm going to cut out the rectangle, and now this is where you would adjust the amount that you calculated. Keeping it equal right there. Let's say I had to add half an inch, that would be my half an inch, and I would fill that up with paper there. And now... I've got a wider hip right there while keeping the bust area the same. So all I need to do now is blend these two lines together so that it makes sense right there. 
if you're adding half an inch that is only a quarter of what you're adding to the hip you end up with an inch here you end up with an inch here that means you're adding two inches around the whole circumference so i'm just gonna cut that away okay so here we have our pattern pieces you can see how this is going to look adjusted length adjustment first that line that was really nice and straight when we did the length adjustment has now moved over because we have added width inside there with that rectangle keeping all the lines parallel we've scooted this area over this way which makes the side seam a little wider right there smooth the curve and that is the adjustment compared to this other side that has nothing that was the original that is what we came up with and then the length adjustment over here that is going to match this one you can do it in about three minutes the important thing is that you know how much you want to add if you do need to add if you don't then it's really easy and then if you are not wanting to make length adjustments then you just sew up your pattern like it is and then you'll be fine but i do need the length because i'm taller i did need to add a little bit of width to my high hip because i rarely sew just one size i usually need more than one size and for this specific pattern, this is the way to do it. Okay, so you saw easily how to add width to the hips. You just cut a rectangle and move it, scoot it off, and that gives you extra space here on the side seam. Whatever amount you add to one of these little areas, it's just a quarter of the whole hip circumference. You know, when we work with pattern pieces, we're usually working with just a quarter of the body, right? On a front, on a back piece. Similar to this, it's just in a very different shape. We just need to do some basic we just need to do some basic maths here to see if we can just sew one straight size or if we need to add a little bit extra on the hips. Look at the size that you're using for your bust. I'll just put examples of what I'm doing. You translate that to what you're doing, of course. <laughs> I'm using a full bust size 14. First of all, you need to measure your actual high hip. So put an elastic at your waist, put an elastic at your full hip so that you know the distance there. And roughly in the middle of that, that is your high hip. Measure that circumference and write it down. <laughs> Knowing your high hip, you are ready to start looking at these charts to see if you can just sew a straight size or if you need to add a little bit to the hips. In my case, I have a quite steep and sharp curve there. My high hip is not too much different than my full hip. It's only one inch smaller. So I can't just say, you know, oh, the top is shorter. It's not going to reach my full hip. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And just sew it blindly. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the mathematical approach because I find that sewing and maths, are just they just go hand in hand. And if you do check those basic things, it can avoid you wasting fabric and making garments that don't fit. And in my case, my problem area tends to be the hips if I just don't pay attention to it. So just grab a piece of paper, write what your high hip actually is there on the corner. Just jot it down there, have it there so you can see. You need to now go to your size that you've chosen for your bust, see what the finished hip is. Now my high hip is only one inch smaller than that. That is not enough ease. <laughs> I need to have at least two to four inches of ease right there at the high hip so that my top is comfortable. Look, I would aim to have three inches of ease there. That is what would make me comfortable. I think two inches is, is not enough really for my comfort level. And especially for the types of fabrics that I'm sewing, which are really lightweight. When you sew really lightweight fabrics, you don't want anything giving you tension on that seams when you move. If with the size 14, I would only get one inch of ease at my high hip, and I know I want three inches of ease, that means in total around the body, I would need to add two more inches. I'm working with a quarter piece right here. So that means I just need to divide two inches by four, which is super easy. It's half an inch. And that's what you saw me adjust in the mini pattern pieces. So you just have to do some basic, basic math. Write down what your high hip is, compare it to the hip finished measurement of the size you're choosing because you're just printing out one size. Do your math, see how much ease you get. See how much ease you have originally, how much ease you want, and then just calculate how much extra you need to add. If I needed to add four inches, then I would just divide four inches by four because we're working with a quarter of the pattern and I would add an inch. The more you add to the width, it is possible. You just have to make sure that you draw the curve really, really nicely so that it makes sense. But it will make sense for your body because that is how you are shaped, right? On the paper, it might look a little curved like that, but if that is what you need, that is what you need. So I hope this was helpful. Totally is different with this one because of the way the pattern pieces are shaped. But you can see that the actual hip adjustment is really easy. It's just a little rectangle. 
just a little basic math to figure out how much to add. And to see the garments, I'm gonna go outside and film. Outside, the natural lighting tends to show the colors more real than if I show them here. Yeah, the colors tend to get warped up in this um, fake environment of the studio. I have these huge lights. So let's hop outside to see the garments. This is my first Le Monde top. I made this one as a muslin. I had really, really high expectations that it was gonna be a wearable muslin. But I did want to make one in a less precious fabric than the one I intended to use for finals. So this is 100% rayon, super lightweight, really love it. It's got stripes. I knew that because it had stripes, they were going to end up looking in a different direction here just because of how this larger piece has been drafted. This, this is how the fabric naturally lies because of the way the pattern piece is. So you can see that the front here is on the straight of grain. I think with the stripes you can really see the pattern pieces. It goes up and down normal but then you have the seam line here or the princess seams that come from the shoulder and then you have your sleeve piece there that's gathered so you have the direction of the stripes going diagonal on the bias right there but right here it's not on the bias like here it's on the cross grain you can see the stripes going horizontal I think it's so interesting and if you make it in a fabric with stripes you're really gonna see it so I wanted to do that it's really really nice Look, the way that these stripes are, they're not symmetrical, like they don't repeat in the same type of order, the stripes aren't the same width, so it was pretty much impossible for me to match them up at the sides. But I did match stripes, it's just that I didn't match the stripes that are the same type of stripes. But you can see the stripes are matching, they're just not the same. You know what I mean? At least I tried, at least I, I don't have white stripes that are not matching, which is what I really didn't want there. Here is the bottom of the sleeve. It's slightly gathered into the bias tape right there. So it does close up closer to the arm, although it's not super tight or anything. You don't have the issue that you have sometimes with some dolman sleeves that are super open here. You lift your arms, you might see your bra or your arm and all that. That's not gonna happen with this one because this bias tape brings it all in really, really nicely there. I really like that. The back has the same type of design. It's just that the neckline is higher, but you still have this center piece here that is on the straight of grain. Scoop neckline finished with bias tape there. I always like doing that in reverse, as you know always gives me the nicest results there because I can see what I'm top stitching and all the hand basting is always really worth it. I have a simple hem here that I've just surged and folded up but I hand sewed this one because I didn't want any thread going through the stripes. That is a huge pet peeve of mine. I know in the shops you can't avoid it when you buy stripey things you're gonna have thread all over them but because I'm sewing that thing that I don't like I don't have to have it in my sewing so usually if you see me do anything with stripes you will see a hand hem because I just like the clean finish right there but it's not that you have to do it I just like it simple styling just a black skirt and some shoes it is how I would actually wear it out I would totally go out like that like right now to the supermarket and I would not feel overdressed because that's just my jam let's see the stripey one this is the first Le Monde top from each to stitch that I made. This is a 14 with a full bust. This is a high hip length. I did add one and a half inches to mine. With the stripes, you can really see the shape of the pattern pieces and how there's a type of princess seams that come from the shoulder. Up closer, you'll see the sleeve details. This is a dolman sleeve. With my arms extended, you can see the dolman shape. You can see how on the sides, the fabric actually ends up being on the bias and I think it's a really interesting design. Best fabrics are the flowy ones. There is the scoop neckline finished with bias binding and on the top of the shoulders you have a small area that is gathered, it's not too much. And with flowy fabrics like this one that is 100% rayon, it's not going to really poof up and give you a lot of volume there either. I think the key, for me at least, is using really soft fluid fabric. Here's another look at the dolman sleeve. It is slightly gathered into the binding at the hem so it's not going to be super open and I really love the style. It's super different, really interesting to sew and a bit of a twist on the typical dolman sleeve which is super simple. This one just has those extra details that make it really worth sewing and wearing.
is my second Lemont top. Now this was a type of a precious fabric for me. I bought it in 2020, I believe, during the pandemic we were locked down. I remember specifically buying this fabric because I knew it was going to make me happy. Fabric does make me happy in that way. And I remember the feeling I had when I bought this. And there are specific fabrics I have stashed away like that, that are sort of have something to do with my feelings. It's really hard for me to get in and sew them actually, but I knew this was gonna be amazing. Now I knew there were these huge flowers here, mainly the orange ones, but there are large white flowers like this one here. I really did not want one of these to end up right on my bust. So I made sure to place one right in the middle here of the center piece. They were pretty spread far apart. They were really close together. So that's how I made sure not to get any right here on the side. And I did the same with the back here, just so it makes sense. There's a large one right there in the center. Not that I have a bust at the back, but I just wanted that to make sense. So that's nice. <laughs> with the print, you can't really see the seam lines that much, but you sort of can. Let me show you. You can see there is a subtle stripe print on the fabric that makes it look like it's got texture. You can see them, they're really subtle, but the fabric is really smooth and flat. There's no texture. But on the bias areas, you can see the stripes going diagonally like that. The same as you did with the other one. To top stitch with, I ended up choosing a really light color and there is the binding. You saw how I did it. Fido, fido galore, oh my gosh, this fabric. But it's so worth it once I have it on and it's so floaty and so airy and so smooth, so beautiful. All the extra time is worth it. Although if I was working with any fabric, I would still hand baste. It's just that the process of doing everything here is just triple the time because the fabric just has a life of its own, you know? This one I did sew with a machine. I didn't do any special hem right here by hand. I just, I just did it with a machine and that was absolutely fine. Same length, I had already confirmed the fitting adjustments I'd made. And as always, this is a really flowy fabric that takes these gathers on the top really, really well. They're not gonna poof up like this. They're just gonna give you a little bit of volume here, but really gentle and I really love that about these fabrics. So let's see this one. I paired it with a denim skirt gray believe it or not i have shoes for all occasions in lots of colors shoes and handbags are my thing if you haven't noticed but yeah i was really really keen to put the green shoes on with this blouse because yeah, i think they just go together let's see this is my second lamont top this time in a really silky crepe it really does look like silk but it's not it's got the same features as the other one only because it's a print you really can't tell from far away really floaty fluid fabric which is special for this design that has a bit of volume at the shoulders and around the sleeves this is a high hip length I did add one and a half inches to mine, but it does sort of look like intended. Here you can see the feet. It is nice and roomy, but still has lovely shaping with all the seam lines. Princess seams that come from the shoulders in the front and the back. So it is a really nice fit. A little fiddly to sew with my fabric, but totally worth it. Lovely design. I really enjoyed sewing something different. There is my scoop neckline and the finished scoop binding. There are the gathers on the shoulders that lie super nicely and flow very nicely with this fabric. This is not your typical dolman sleeve and I love all the details added. Using a fluid fabric is going to keep all these features delicate and not voluminous in my opinion. I'm so happy with mine, I think they're just amazing. I'm happy I was still able to use print with all of them because that's what I really wanna do. I think if you use stripes, it's gonna look striking. No matter what stripes you have, you're gonna have stripes on the bias on the side, which is amazing. And you just get a type of stripe play without much effort at all. <laughs> just keep your pieces on the grain line and you'll be fine. I always love a bias tape that's made with stripes because they end up diagonal and they contrast to what you're sewing it onto which is always amazing. And then this one's just my special one. I have green shoes. I mean, how else can I not be happier? I love it when I have shoes that color that matches the top because I just dress like that. Tend to be classic that way where I want my things to match. Shoes and handbags have to match. I know that's old school, but that's how I like it. 
I also have a green bag. <laughs> so this is just a happy fabric, a really springy fabric. It matches Brazil perfectly. Yeah, I can, I can just go with this one to the supermarket if I want to and I wouldn't feel overdressed. I just feel amazing. Lovely gathers, such a lovely twist on a dolman style. I'd never sewn anything like this and it's amazing. I know I'm gonna make many more. It doesn't take up that much fabric, which is also amazing. I really enjoy that. Don't forget that the Lamont top is 20% off through the 18th of May next week. That's Wednesday. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below as always. If you are having issues calculating how much to add to your hips, you know, if you wanna do that, just send me an email and I'll help you out. Just tell me what your high hip is, what your bust size is, and I'll tell you in about a minute how much you need to add. Anything that's got to do with maths comes really naturally to me. I'm a really mathematical person. I've always been, ever since I was little, and I get such joy in just doing maths. I'm weird, I know but I know it can help with sewing and if you're struggling with that, I'm more than happy to help. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I will see you again super soon, like super soon. I have some neat sewing to share with you. So I'll see you in a few hours. Bye.